Uh, welcome back. Today I am Dr. Pallavi from RNSIT. I will be doing the 8086 string instruction portion. We have already covered the other instructions, arithmetic, data movement, etc. Today's topic will be about the string instructions and uh, these will be also uh, helped out with ALPs, that is assembly language programming. Basically, the string instructions that we have are five in number, that's moose, that is moose string byte, stores, that is STOS, then loads, compares and scans. These instructions are used with prefixes. They cannot, uh, and let us look at the prefixes. There are three types of prefixes, repeat, repeat on equal and repeat on not equal. These increase the opera operation range of the string instructions. Now let us take the string instructions one by one. The first uh, instruction uh, generally is a move. If I talk about uh, uh, the move instruction, if I say move AL comma BH, here AL and BH are the operands and they are specified in the mnemonic itself. But when I talk about uh, moose here, it can be either moose B or moose W, there are no operands specified in the mnemonic. All the operands are implicit. Hence, these are known as implied addressing mode. The string instructions coming under string addressing mode also can be classified under implied addressing mode as the operands are not specified as a part of the instruction. Now let us look at the moose uh, string uh, 1 format. This moose string 1 here the B or W is not specified. So what does it do is it takes a string 1 how it is declared whether the string is declared as a byte or a word type. Based on this the assembler will take this moose and make it as either moose b or moose w. When I look at moose b, this instruction copies a byte of data from a memory location in the source string to the destination. The address of the source string is given by the segment register ds with the index register si. SI is the source index, DI is the data segment. Together they give the 20 bit physical address and from this physical address the memory address, the memory data are copied. And now what about the destination? For the destination the segment register is ES, that is your extra segment and the index register is DI, that is your destination index. So totally though this moose B does not contain any operands, it is using the segment registers DS, ES and also the index register SI and DI. Apart from these registers, it also uses the flags. One flag, the main flag is the DF, the direction flag. As we know, the move instruction does not affect any flags. So similarly here the moves instruction will also not affect any flags. So repeating the moves B instruction copies one byte of data from a memory location in source string and um, copies into the destination string. What about moves W? Moves W is oh, the same a copy of moose b only thing is instead of copying a byte of data it will copy a word of data. So pictorically assume that this is a string of data here it can be an array of 23, 5a etc. Let us say some data is stored. Now this array of uh, data I will call it as a source string and it is having a starting address something like 89058. Then I will also have another string, I will this string let us say it starts at the 20 bit physical address BA045 and I will call this uh, uh, as a destination string. So we have basically a source string and a destination string. To come to the source string I need contents in uh, data segment DS and the source index 
DS is put something like 8900, SI as 0058 and when I compute the 20 bit physical address it will be 89058 and that is pointing to the first uh, location in the source string. Similarly, in the two registers ES and DI together gives the 20 bit address of the memory location in the destination and let me set the direction flag DF equal to 0. Now let us uh, execute the instruction moves B. On execution of this moves B instruction, the 23H that is present in the source string is copied into the destination string. This 23 in the source is unaffected, it will remain as it is. Whereas in the destination uh, we have 23H copied into the location BA045. Apart from copying, since the direction flag is set to 0, your SI, the source index is incremented by 1. Uh, from 58, it will become 59 so that it will point to the next location. Similarly, your DI will be incremented by 1. DI, if it is 45, it will become 46 so that it uh, points to the next memory locations. So these are the next memory locations. So 23 is copied and now the source pointer is at 5A. It has been incremented. Similarly, the destination pointer also has been incremented. So the execution of moves B has copied one byte of data from the source string to the destination string. Now what happens if DF is 1? Your direction flag here in this example is 0. Suppose the direction flag is 1. The contents of SI and DI instead of incrementing they are being decremented. So this is an example SI is 59, DI is 46 and this is a before execution of the moves B instruction. Your DS and ES remain unchanged. Now, if the direction flag is 0, after execution of moves B, the source index and the destination index are incremented by 1 so that they point to the next memory location. 59 will become 5A, 46 will become 47. Similarly, if DF is 1, the source and destination registers are decremented by 1 so that 59 becomes 58 and 46 becomes 45. The direction flag can be set by the two instructions CLD that is clear direction flag then set direction flag. So once again these two are also implied addressing mode. Here the operands are not uh, specified specifically in the mnemonic rather they are implied and the operand that is implied here is a direction flag. As we have seen the moose instruction will copy only one byte of data. But if it is a string, the entire string has to be copied. Just moose B alone or moose W alone is not sufficient. We need extra prefix. The prefix is REP. The repeat is not an instruction. It is a prefix. If this prefix is associated with an instruction and now in this example the instruction is moose b what will happen the repeat as such uses the register cx as we know the cx is a counter and we, before we use the repeat uh, prefix we have to load cx and when any instruction is prefixed with the repeat the particular instruction is repeated again and again till CX becomes 0. Every time this moves B is executed, the CX becomes uh, decremented by 1, the CX is decremented by 1 and once CX becomes 0, the repetition will stop. It will go to the next instruction. So the repeat will repeat the instruction with which it is associated cx time. So the repeat requires cx to be loaded before. So this is an example where one whole string has to be copied into the destination. So once again this is my source string 
and the source string, I need to initialize at least four registers. DS, ES segment registers, DS is source, ES is uh, destination segment register. Then I also have to uh, initialize DI and SI. DI and SI are the destination and source index. So the source string is given by DS and SI and the destination is given by ES and DI. And when I have CX is equal to 0, 06, and I use a single instruction repeat moves B then immediately what will happen after a few microseconds this entire data from the source is copied into the destination and the pointer in the destination points to the last uh, location and similarly here uh, the source pointer also will point to the last location and this stops once CX becomes 0 here CX is 0, 06, so the moves B is repeated 6 times and each time the moves B instruction is executed, one byte of data from source to destination is copied and as soon as it copies one byte, the pointers are incremented. The pointers are SI and DI, so both of them are incremented so that they will point to the next location. And since the CX does not become 0, initially CX will be 0, 06, For the first time you execute moves B, CX will become 0, 05, so these two are pointing to the next locations and so the moves B will be executed again, so 5A also will be copied then again CX is decremented, CX becomes 4 and what about the pointers? Pointers will now point to the next location that is 55 and here and again this moves B will be executed so 55 is copied. So all this will happen parallelly. So the finally the registers that are affected are SI and DI by moves B. So whenever you have this move string byte the SI and DI are incremented provided <coughs> DF is equal to 0. And what about CX? CX is affected by the re repeat prefix. CX is not affected by moves, rather CX is affected by repeat. What about DF? DF should be set before you execute the moves B instruction. The same program if we are supposed to write without using string instructions. Yes, we can write without using string instruction. So for this once again CX is 0, 06 and then uh, we have to load uh, the contents of the source that is pointed by SI into AL. So move AL square brackets SI, what does it do? it moves the contents of the memory location here in this case 23H which is pointed by SI into AL and from AL it is moved to the destination and what about the destination? The destination here it is pointed by DI. As such we cannot move from memory to memory directly. We have to move from memory to the accumulator and from accumulator to the destination again. Whereas in the string instruction the moves B will directly move from source to the destination. So we need not have to worry about uh, moving SI to a register. It can, it can be either an AL or BL any register again from that register to DI. And we are after moving to point to the next locations, I have to increment SI and DI and I also have to use the instruction loop again. So around 6 instructions are replaced by a single instruction repeat moves B. This is still made more powerful by using moves W. If I use moves W, one word here by moves B moves one byte, moves W will move one word that is 23H and 5A at once. Every instruction of moves W moves 16 bit data from the source to the destination. After moving the 16 bit data to point to the next word, your SI and DI have to be incremented by 2. If it is a byte, both of them are incremented by 1. If it is a word, both of them have to be incremented by 2. So moves W takes care of that. And we also can use repeat with moves W. But 
one uh, thing that we have to take care is about the CX. So, if I have to move 100 bytes, CX should be loaded with 50, 100 by 2 because moves W is moving not 1 byte, it is moving 2 bytes at a time. Let us take an example uh, ALP wherein uh, we are using this uh, moves B or moves W instructions. Let us look at uh, the regular block movement of data. Generally, we can have two cases that is with or without overlap. This has been done in the lab uh, without using string instruction. So, same example let us uh, do with uh, string instruction. So, this is block movement of data with or without overlap. So, the first case that is without overlap, uh, let us uh, transfer 14 bytes of data. Once again, when I start the ALP, first will be the data segment initialization and the data segment initialization. Let me say I have the source string or array named as data1 and it is defined as db. db is defined byte. Once again, remember db is an assembler directive. It is not an instruction. What does it do? It will specify that data1 is of byte type. And then I have all these uh, characters, capital A, B, C, etc. All this in single quotes. This specifies a complete uh, string. Now, how is this string stored in memory? The ASCII values of capital A is stored in the uh, memory. For example, capital A has an ASCII value of 40H and that will be stored in the memory location. But here I am not giving 40H, rather I am giving A as a character in a quote and that a single quote and that will be converted. And like this I can have a string of characters. Each character will occupy one byte of space in the memory. And uh, I also have to now specify data for the destination. Let me say data 2 is my destination string and once again this destination string, string is of byte data. So, again I say db. So, data 2 is a variable name for the destination string and how many, how much memory should I allocate to data 2. My job is to copy data 1 string and put it at uh, starting from data 2. These two are two arrays. Let us look at the length of data 1. If I count from A, B till T, there are 14 uh, locations. So, the strength, the length of the string is around 14. So, I will say data 2 also should be of length 14. This can be still higher also 14 or 20 etc. Then I am duplicating how many uh, memory locations we are duplicating? 14 memory locations we are duplicating and what is the type of each memory location? Each memory location uh, is of byte type. So, the db specifies byte type memory location and du duplicates 14 of uh, such bytes and what is this question mark? This question mark says we are just allocating the data, uh, allocating the memory and we are not filling any data into the allocated memory. Uh, the memory is left as it is. Suppose instead of question mark, if we had 0, 0 here, then all these 14 locations will be located, uh, will be filled with 0. Not only 14 locations are allocated to data 2, they also will be filled with 0, 0. So, uh, for the block movement of data, first we need the data segment initialization. So, I need two arrays. Let me say the two arrays are data 1 and data 2. I have specified data 1 as a source string and the source string is consisting of uh, some characters and uh, each character is one byte in length and uh, these have to be moved to the destination. This can be your name also uh, or your register number anything that has to be copied into another array. And let me say this array starts from an address 30H. So, we can specify that also using this assembler directory org 30H. So, starting from this address, I am specifying data 2 string and this data 2 string is of byte type and we are allocating 14 uh, uh, locations for this. So, once uh, allocation of data is over, then the movement. So, how do we move the data? 
in the code segment, uh, first we have to initialize the segment registers. Uh, we are assuming both data 1 and data 2 are in the same segment. Since they are in the same segment, uh, I can have both the DS and ES as the same. Only if the segments are different, uh, more than 64K, etc., then I need to have a different ES. But here uh, we are assuming data 1 and data 2 are in the same segment, so DS and ES are loaded with the same value. So, move AX at data will get me the starting address of the uh, uh, data segment and that will be moved into AX and from that I move into DS. We cannot uh, uh, get immediate data into DS or ES. It has to be moved through AX register only for segment registers. For other uh, registers, we can move the immediate data directly. Next, coming to the direction flag CLD, it will clear the direction flag uh, DF equal to 0. Next, we are uh, loading SI and DI in the index registers. SI points to the uh, offset of data 1. Instead of using the assembler directory offset, I can also the use the symbol at. So, move DI. I can use offset space data 2 or I can use at data 2. So, SI and DI will now SI along with DS will point to data 1, DI along with ES will point to data 2. So, we have two pointers now, one pointer to data 1 string, another pointer to data 2. So, and your direction flag is 0. Now, let us also load CX with 14. Remember, we had uh, allocated uh, the string as it is a 14 byte string, 14 characters have to be moved or copied. Next, so CX is equal to 14. So, this is your initialization part. The initialization part is initialize the segment registers, initialize the index registers SIDI, then initialize the direction flag and the counter the counter is CX. Just a single instruction now, repeat moves B uh, will copy the entire 14 bytes of string two characters to the destination address. So, you can use either repeat moves B or another style of programming is instead of moves B, if I use moves W, the CX instead of 14, it should be loaded with 7, half of the contents. So, this is a simple uh, uh, example of block move wherein uh, the complete data is moved into the destination. So now, let us look at another example. This is a second ALP wherein we have block move with overlap. So, in the previous example, uh, your data 1 and data 2 are not overlapping. So, we can start from the beginning and we can copy one by one. But in this example, let us say I have this destination, uh, sorry, so I have this uh, array uh, 23 to 32 and our destination address is starting from 73 and so on. So, suppose I use the previous style of programming, first 23 will be copied to 78 and this 78 will be overwritten with 23. So, when I come down, I do not have 78, it is already overwritten. So, for this scenario, I can wherein we have block move wherein the destination block is overlapping with the source block for a little bit. I cannot uh, use a regular style with the df equal to 0. Here, df is equal to 1, the direction flag is 1 and initialize the source pointer to, pa to point to the last byte in the string. Similarly, the destination also will point to the last byte in the string. Start copying from the end. So, when I start copying from the end, so first I move 32, then 32 will be moved here, then 9 you move, then 78 you move, then 55 you move into the place of 78 and then 5a here, then 23h. Uh, hence, we can uh, copy the data without any loss. So, if I start from the beginning, 
what will happen? First itself you move 23 to 78. So, before 78 is copied, it is overwritten with 23. You are losing the data in this case of block move with overlap. So, for such cases d f equal to 1 is required and for this d f equal to 1, the source pointers and the destination pointer point initially to the last location and when you execute moves B instruction, the pointers move up and they move up and uh, they come here in the last both of them will this at the end this will be pointing here and similarly the destination will be pointing here after the instruction. So, now like this is about the moves instruction wherein uh, we have seen what moves does and what are the registers associated with moves and the flag that which is a flag the dediction flag and how it uh, and dictates the coping whether it is from top to bottom or bottom to top depending on the situation. Now, let us go to the next instruction that is your stores instruction. So, your move requires uh, two arrays and let us say I have to initialize one set of uh, memory location with some data. It can be a simple clear memory. A clear memory is in a C instruction wherein the complete uh, memory locations will be filled in with zeros etcetera. Uh, but in ALP assembly level language we have to physically move the zeros to all the locations. It can be either 0 or any let us say 10 in all locations or 20 in all locations. So, for such cases we can use uh, stores instruction. The stores instruction loads this AL contents into the memory location pointed by ESDI. So, here AL is a source and from here it is moving to the destination and the string in the destination is po pointed by ES with DI. ES is a segment register, DI is a index register together we have the 20 bit address. So, each time you have the stores instruction executed, oh, AL contents are moved into the location and uh, the di will be incremented so to point to the next location and once again if the direction flag is 1 di instead of pointing to the next location it will point to the previous location and this stores instruction can also be used with the repeat uh, prefix to initialize a block of uh, memory and the stores will once again be of two types stores b the B specifies it is byte or stores W, the stores W is word, store a word uh, uh, location. So, this is an example that we are talking about. So, if I do repeat stores B, before you execute repeat stores B, we have to initialize ES and DI, that is your string. Then let us say I have to going from top to bottom, so DF equal to 0 and uh, we have to initialize 5 memory locations, so CX is equal to 0, 5. So, do this and then you do the instruction repeat stores B immediately. Let us say if AL is 33, after execution all the memory locations will be having 33 each. And uh, this is stores W, as I said stores W uh, will move AL and AH, 16 bit data at once. AL will be moved to ESDI uh, and AH will be moved to the next location DI plus 1, lower byte first and then upper byte. And once uh, the AX contents um, basically AL and AH together are moved, then the DI here will be incremented by 2 if df is 0 and uh, it will point that is it will point to the next word location or if it is 1 it will point to the previous location and once again the stores w can be used with the repeat prefix. The third string instruction is a loads instruction and here in this loads instruction we are never supposed to use with the repeat prefix. As such the loads instruction what does it do? Here it will copy from the string into AL that is your accumulator. If it is a byte and if it is loads W, it will copy into AX, a 16 bit data into AX. Here the destination is your accumulator and your source is the string and as we know the source string is pointed by DS 
and assign. Previously, for stores, uh, the destination was a destination string. So, it is uh, pointed by ES and DI. And in this case, for load, the string is acting as a source and hence the string is pointed by DS and SI. So, the loads uses these two registers DS and SI and from there the contents are moved into AL. From this memory location, it is moved into AL for loads B. And this also loads B as usual uses a direction flag. Depending on the direction flag, it will either increase or decrease. But remember, loads instruction should be never used with repeat uh, prefix. And what is the use of this loads and stores? We already have seen move. Moves is for moving uh, block transfer of data with without overlap. Stores and loads can be used for testing memory. For example, let us say I write a byte of data 33 into 100 memory location using stores B and repeat. Some of the memory locations may be corrupted. You have copied the file or in this case 33 uh, H data into 100 memory locations. But we are not sure whether all locations will have 33 H. So, in that case after writing 33 H into all 100 memory locations, read all the 100 locations that is load from the memory again and each time you load check whether 33 is there. So, for checking we can use XOR. So, we XOR with 33 and if XOR results 0, already AL is 33 and you are going to XOR with 33, it implies it has been correct, uh, correctly copied. And this is what is used in all your IBM PCs where you have a BIOS routine. It will check whether your RAM is proper or not. Only thing is uh, it is not so simple as only 33H. It will be uh, checking with the different patterns uh, that are supposed to be stored. So, this is a program uh, wherein uh, you are going to first uh, load data into the memory locations. After loading uh, the data into the memory location using stores B, that is repeat stores B or repeat stores W, after uh, storing the data into the memory location, uh, we are again going to get the data back into AL and we are going to XOR uh, with the required data and we check the zero flag and if the zero flag is uh, zero, it is set, that is if it is equal, it is pass. If it is not set, that means uh, the another data data is there, it is not 33 and it implies a bad memory. So, to check this we use the instruction loads B. For loads B, once again the segment registers is DS, SI and DF. For stores, the registers are ES, DI and once again the same DF for both and then we can also have CX equal to 100. So, this is an example ALP, uh, I write an 8086 ALP that uses stores B to store byte AAH into 100 memory location and use loads to test the contents of each location to see if AAH is there. If the test fails, the system should display the message bad memory. So, now uh, the solution. Uh, this is your algorithm. The first is initialize the segment registers DS and ES. So, to initialize this we have the three uh, mnemonics here wherein move AX comma add data then move DS comma AX and move ES comma AX. So, the starting address of the data segment is copied into the DS register and the ES register. We are assuming both the source and the, the string is same. So, it is in the same uh, segment and let the direction flag be equal to 0. So, for this CLD that is clear direction flag and we are loading the counter with uh, 50 that is half of 100 move CX uh, comma 50 so that I can use the stores W instruction. So, for stores W I do not need 100 if it is 100 bytes the CX will be 50. Then set the destination pointer. Here now the destination pointer di is point is loaded with uh, array 1 or di is pointing to array 1 data and then we are what is the pattern to be copied? Let me change the pattern from 33 to a. So, here a x will be loaded with uh, 4 a's that is a l is a a h also is a a. 
and when I do this all A's uh, or that is all 100 locations each location will have AA. So, this instruction will copy AA that is 16 bit of AA into 50 word locations or in other words 100 word lo 100 byte locations will have AA. So, this is about copying. So, we have uh, copied the mem data into the memory. The next part is to check whether it has been correctly copied. So, to check whether it is correctly copied, uh, to we have to test the loaded pat uh, pattern. So, for that once again load the source pointer and, uh, and then load the count. So, now SI should point to the array 1, same array 1 starting address. Now, once again CX is 100 and uh, we have to move AH with the pattern to be checked. The pattern to be checked here is AA. So, uh, use the uh, instruction loads B and remember loads B cannot be used with the repeat prefix. So, I have here a uh, variable that is your uh, uh, label. So, for, uh, again is the label here. So, once you execute loads B, the data from the memory will be loaded into AL and uh, we already have AH with the pattern to be checked that is AA. Now, when I XOR AL with AH, this AA of AH will be XOR with AL and if both of them are equal, zero flag is set. If zero flag is not set, go to fail. Uh, jump on not 0 to fail and in the fail what am I doing? Uh, we are printing the message let me say message 1 is already there in data segment and that message 1 will print fail with the int 21h and ah09 together uh, with the dx pointing the message 1 this subroutine will uh, print fail 1. If it is not so it will check for the next location a loop again as we know the loop will decrement the CX counter and if it is not 0, it will go on again and again. So, for this here CX is 100 because we are using loads B and we are checking each byte of data at once and once CX is 0, it comes out of this and we can say jump exit 1 and at exit 1, I can have the same thing but instead of message 1, I can print another message and that message will say pass that is all this have been uh, cor correctly copied. So, th this is an example where we are using both the instructions that is loads B and stores B at once. Now, the two more instructions are left that is scan string and uh, compare string. So, these scans and uh, compare string are used with the uh, prefix repeat z or repeat uh, not z or repeat z it can also be called as repeat on equal and uh, re p n z repeat on not 0 it can also specify it as repeat on not equal. So, previously for the moves stores we had used only repeat instruction for scans and compare we are using the other two prefixes that is repeat z repeat on equal and repeat on not equal. So, how does this uh, prefix work uh, repeat on equal. For repeat instruction we have just cx is equal to 0 the condition for exit. Each time repeat is executed cx is decremented I'm sorry each time the instruction is executed uh, the cx is decremented and once cx is 0 it will stop repetition. When I have repeat equal here it not only it will check cx is equal to 0, it will also check whether the 0 flag equal to 0. If 0 flag is 0, it will repeat the instruction. If 0 flag is 1, it will come out. And what about repeat on not equal? So, if, the, if it is not equal, uh, the 0 flag uh, will be 1 and uh, uh, the condition for exit is once again cx equal to 0 or 0 flag equal to 0 that it should be set if it is not. Now, let us look at the uh, uh, other uh, conditions once again that is the direction flag should be 0 or 1 so that the destination will be incremented or decremented. The scans b uh, will compare each byte of the array pointed by si and di with al. So, AL will have a data and that data is compared with the string, each byte of the string. 
So, this is what we were talking about the repeat instruction. After execution of uh, instruction, C x is decremented and if C x is 0, this instruction is not executed, rather the next instruction is executed. If C x is not 0, this instruction is repeated again. And when I talk about repeat on equal, it checks the C x and as well as the 0 flag. If equality condition is there, what does it imply? Z f equal to 1. So, instruction is repeated if C x is not equal to 0. If not equal condition, that is uh, uh, I am using repeat on equal, but a not equal condition has appeared. So, if it is a not equal condition, that is it implies Z f equal to 0. Though C x is not 0, the instruction is stopped because it will repeat only if it is an equal condition. If it is not an equal condition, though C x is not 0, it will come out. And the other condition, the last condition, uh, the complete string is checked, still the 0 flag is the equal, uh, but the counter has become 0. If once the counter becomes 0, even in this case, the instruction repetition is stopped. So, for the repeat instruction, uh, a repeat equal to happen, uh, to be repeated, to be repeated, one is the count should not be 0, similar to re repeat. And second, uh, it is about the 0 flag. As the name says, repeat on equal. Only if equality is there, it will repeat as long as C x is not 0. If there is not, in, if it is unequal, it comes out. And the same thing for repeat on not equal. Now, it's a, as I said, the scan is a powerful string instruction and it has a lot of applications, simple application. It's checking for a letter in a given string. So, let me say I have an example here, something like a Mr. Red. something has been uh, printed in the string. In this string, I have to either count the number of E's or A's or a simple one, just <coughs> check whether a particular character is present in this string to check whether a particular character is present in this string. So, the letter to be checked, let me say G, you load it into AL register and the string I have to load this, it is pointed by ES and DI. So, your DI is with the string address and once again uh, direction flag is 0. So, it will start from M and it will end at D and you have to load the count, that is the string length and we are going to repeat scanning by repeat on not equal. The scans B is repeated uh, Cx times. Uh, if there is no G, the complete string will be uh, scanned and it will say that uh, since Cx is 0, G is not found. In this example, G is there. So, uh, once uh, it comes to G portion, it, uh, the equality condition will occur. Here, I am repeating as long as it is not equal. AL is loaded with G. First time it will check G with M. G is not equal to M. So, a repetition will happen. This is repeat on not equal. So, since G is not M, it will go to the next uh, byte. Well, what is the next byte? Uh, R, that is your character R. Then that also will be checked with G. No. So, it will increment because D, the direction flag is 0 and the count is 11. So, C x is also not 0. Second character is checked. The third character dot also is checked. So, when it comes to the fourth character, the G is in the string and AL is also G. So, since there is a match, provided both of them are uppercase, if it is a lower case, the ASCII values will be different. So, again it will be a not equal, but in this case, this is an uppercase G, this is also an uppercase G in AL. Since there is a match condition, it will stop and the scans B will stop, the repetition will stop and it will come to the next instruction. So, now let us extend this program. So, you write a program uh, that scans the name Mr. Gonas uh, for the letter G and once it finds a letter G, it has to replace with a letter F for J and then we display the corrected value. So, the initial uh, data segment uh, initialization is there and then we are making di to point to the data 1 array. Then we are clearing the direction flag and once again Cx, the counter is loaded with 09. Al is with the character to be scanned G 
and we are going to repeat it and uh, one we do not know whether this repeat or not equal is stopping because the character is not found or the counter becomes 0. Even if the counter becomes 0, it will stop repetition and coming here. So, I have to check whether C x is 0. If C x 0, what does it imply? G is not found. If C x is not 0, uh, we have to check whether the 0 flag is set. 0 flag is when G is found. When both of them are equal, uh, so this is not equal. If it both of them are equal, the repetition stops. So, when I come out here, I check whether the 0 flag. So, jump on not equal to over and in that over, uh, I say the already uh, instead of G, we have instead what we are supposed to do, if it is not 0 flag is uh, G is not there, if G is found, what do I have to do? I have to replace uh, that uh, G, I have to replace this G uh, with the other letter and that letter which uh, we have to replace, let me call it as J here, okay, it can be F for any number, that letter, it has to be replaced in the place of G. But as we know, when we do the scans uh, instruction, uh, the pointer DI, it has finished G, automatically it would have been pointing to O. Now, G has to be replaced. So, the pointer from O, it should come back to G. So, to come back to G, the D, DI should be decremented. If you decrement DI, it will go back to the previous character, that is again it will go back to G and at that uh, byte pointer DI, I am moving the character G. So, G is replaced by J. So, you can uh, uh, do for this any character. And the last is the compare string where we compare two uh, data arrays. So, one is pointed by SI and DI. Similar to scans, this compares, in scans we compare the string with uh, AL, whereas in compare string, we are comparing two uh, strings of data. One string of data is pointed by SI with uh, DS, another one DI with ES. Once again, they are incremented if DF is equal to 0 or they are decremented. Once again, this compares will work with uh, repeat on equal or repeat on not equal. Both compares and scans will affect all the flags, the 0, the carry. Only thing is the destination is not uh, changed in compares. Only in moves, loads and stores the destination uh, operand uh, will change. Here compare, as you know, the compare operation will compare and affects the flags without loading the data. So, a simple program which compares two strings and displays spelling is correct if equal or wrong spelling if it is not equal. Let us say you have a dictionary meaning like Europe, this is a correct spelling, but what is typed as uh, something else, E-U-R-O-P-E, as soon as you type generally you get a red color in your word, but how does it happen in the ALP? So, for this uh, uh, we have to display the two messages, one is correct message, spelling is correct and the other is a wrong message which says wrong spelling. So, in the program in the code segment, once again uh, the direction flag cleared, SI and DI, SI is pointing to the uh, correct uh, that is dictionary that is Europe, DI is uh, uh, pointing to the typed uh, string, this is your typed string. So, once I have loaded the pointers SI to point to uh, the Europe and DI to be checked uh, that is your typed, then the length of this is 6, so CX is 6 and then we use the instruction compares B and that compares B is loaded with the prefix repeat on equal. So, first E and E is checked. So, E and E are same, so it will repeat on equal, so it will go to the next, U and U are compared. So, even U and U are same, so repeat on equal is uh, correct, so satisfied it will go to the next and at the same time when E is compared, the C x will be decremented by 1, so it will be 5, so again it will be repeated U is checked, but next R is checked with O but since both of them not equal, so but it is repeat on equal, now it is not equal, so it will stop, C x has not become 0, but still it will stop because an inequality has happened, R with 0, so it will stop the execution and uh, come to the next and here I am going to check 
uh, if uh, either the CX is 0, full string is checked, so it is a correct spelling or it in between it has terminated, that is because of it is not equal, then uh, what do we do? We just uh, execute that. If it is equal, we say uh, uh, over, that is your correct message. If it is not equal, we display the message wrong message. Okay, so, this is your uh, examples of all the uh, string instructions, five instructions we have done, moves, stores, then loads, scans and compare. And this is a small uh, one that is your xlat instruction. As we know xlat is an implied addressing mode and uh, this is used for accessing data in lookup table. Let us say you create a table of squares. 0, 1, 4, 9. This is 4 is square 2, 3 square is 9, 16, etc. I can use a mul instruction, a mul, let us say ax with 4 and then mul ax with ax. So, what will happen? 4 square, but the mul will take a lot of time, let us say 60 cycles. Instead of this, I can use this xlat which is faster. So, point let bx points to the square table starting address and al should uh, contain the offset into this. So, I want the square of 4, so put al then execute xlat. As soon as you execute xlat, what will happen is al will be written uh, with the contents of uh, starting address plus 4. The starting address plus 4 is 16 and the 16 will be copied back into al. So, this lookup table here it is a simple example of square. Instead of this, you can also have for ASCII numbers. Suppose, I have uh, ASCII number of 0 is 30h 1. Instead of a BCD to ASCII conversion, I can have a lookup table of ASCII numbers. So, if I want ASCII value of 0, I can load AL with uh, 0 and I BX with the starting address here 30 and I say XLAT AL 0 will be replaced by 30H. And you have many other operations also that lookup table may contain 7 segment quotes and so on. So, this uh, XLAT as I said is for data lookup and it will be the same as uh, uh, it will enhance the string instructions. So, today's class we have done uh, five string instruction with the uh, uh, three types of uh, repeat prefixes and we have covered around uh, six uh, ALPs along with the XLAD uh, instruction. So, thank you for